So I've talked previously about how we use object recognition to record interesting things on our outside cameras, like triggering events when it sees people or animals. I've also showed uh, how we use these various displays that we have scattered around the house to show home movies and videos of, I have perhaps a few too many of these displays. There's a couple more in here, but there's just so much fun. Uh, so today I thought I'd show how we bring those two things together and using Node-RED and show a couple of Node-RED tricks while I'm at it. So I'm going to walk outside here and there's a camera in our driveway out there that's going to record motion when we come into the field of view. So this is a wireless camera so it sometimes has a little bandwidth issues but hopefully it'll work. So. That's our guy right there. So when I step into the field of view, it'll create a uh, snapshot, four boxes. That upper left box has the bounding box showing the object. The upper right shows a uh, fresh recording with a snapshot without the bounding box. The lower left shows uh, 30 uh, snapshots one second apart. The lower right shows a 10 second video clip. And then after 30 seconds, it reverts back to showing the uh, home movies and photos. So this Node-RED camera code is one of my more complicated flows. So we'll just keep this to kind of a high level overview without getting too much into the details. When one of the cameras detects a motion, it will create an FTP file and we'll watch for it in that shared directory. If it's not raining, Time is five then what we'll do is we'll parse that file to figure out which camera it was and we'll set up a call to Dudes, which is a very nifty object detection service that's easily set up within Home Assistant. That is then triggered with this call to image processing. Once that Dudes comes back with object detection results that will trigger this service call here and in this function we'll decide what to do if it's one of these types of objects we will come up with a high score if that high score is below uh, our threshold we'll just return and do nothing otherwise what we'll do is we'll do one other filter here using a simple bounding box algorithm with this function call, we'll detect if we've repeatedly seen that object too many times. Like if there's a lot of sunshine coming or going, uh, shadows will create false detections. So we'll filter those out with this. And if it's not one of those, if it is one of those, we'll return again and do nothing. If it's not one of those, then we will return various node red outputs here. And you can see the third output goes to a log. The second output goes down here where we'll send the image to Telegram. This first output will trigger a couple of things. One is it will send the camera motion MQTT flag to other code that might be interested in when we have camera motion. And in this flow, we'll detect if I'm away from my desk or not and send a message to my cell phone or to the house speakers accordingly. So those green boxes update the various node red HTML files in the display that we showed earlier. This is the box that shows the bounding box. This is the one that shows the first image. And this is the box that gets updated every second for 30 seconds. Once the MP4 file video file is done copying, then that gets sent to the video box. And these two video boxes are a collection of the last four and nine videos clips. Similarly, we have a collection of the last 20-ish bounding box pictures. This is the node red dashboard. If I go down here to the camera snaps, here you'll see those last 20 snaps from various cameras. And if I go down to the snaps V, you can see the last uh, nine video clips from the various cameras. And that's about it. So there's a couple other things we do here. This is a simple call to a, a watchdog for all of the cameras. Every 10 minutes, we'll just go through the list and see if we can ping them. The watchdog will 
tell us if they have not been active lately. This lets us set the threshold, like if I'm doing debug, I'll want to have any object detected. Normally a threshold is set to 95. So this section does a daily reset, cleans up those FTP files. And this section of the code allows us to process images and videos via email. Most of the cameras I have are real link cameras. A couple of them I have are the inexpensive WISE cameras, but they unfortunately don't do FTP or have any sort of API enabled. So what we do is we tell them to email to a junk email account. And then once a minute, we check that. And if we see an image come through, we'll copy that JPEG to a local file. We have a virtual camera set up that just looks at that local file and then it gets processed just like all the other cameras. This allows us to reboot the camera and here's a couple of uh, unused code segments that I have. So let's do another quick demo where we can pretend we just saw motion on camera C5 by clicking this inject button. C5. You can see the display here got updated and uh, we're updating this section once a second. And you see the snapshot being, uh, the one second snapshot being updated here. That's probably enough of a demo. So let's show you a couple of node red tricks now. One of the ones I really like is this ability to group sections of code in these boxes. Let's ungroup this section and I'll show you how that works. You select the nodes that you're interested in grouping and you can use the uh, keyboard shortcut, control shift G and group them, simple as that. Then you can move this around as a unit or you can select individual nodes in there and, and move them around as you normally would. You can easily copy the attributes of a group using another keyboard shortcut, control shift C, and you can then paste that into your new nodes with control shift V. Another useful tip is using the status node. You can put whatever information you'd like using this node status call, and then it shows up right below the nodes. So here you can see this last call had a threshold of five and a score of 11. So that's a quick way to just kind of see how Various nodes are doing various things. There's another example here. If you need a little more detail, you can connect up to these debug nodes. I usually have a couple of them sitting around so that I can go to the debug panel. And when an event happens, you can see that the data gets sent to node C2 here, came from here. You can dive into that data as much as you need to. Another thing that shows up in this debug panel is if you use call to uh, node.warn, which is a, just another way of directing debug to that debug panel. Another thing I like to do is leave myself notes because I have the memory that doesn't last very long. So it's just a way of commenting the code. And I like to keep the node name short just to keep the flows that they f I can fit more into a window. So that's why you'll see these somewhat cryptic node names. And then there's a keyboard keyboard shortcuts. Oh, it looks like we have a visitor. Here you can see uh, the dogs in action. I'll put this on pause, but you can see a, a driveway just detected a car. Um, so we'll pick this up later. So another tip is to use keyboard shortcuts. You can see them listed up here. The two most useful that I have are the clear debug messages and the deploy. Let me demonstrate those. So See, I've got a whole bunch of debug messages over here. If I hit Control Alt L, that gets cleared away. If I make a change to something, I can rather than click up here and hit Deploy, I can just hit Control D to deploy it quickly. Another tip is if you want to disable a particular uh, node instead of deleting it, you can just go up here and hit Disable. Uh, that will gray it out and cause it to be non-functional. Uh, one last tip is you can you want to make a whole bunch of edits to a flow and are afraid about not having it backed up, you can back up the whole flow by hitting Control A and Control C and copying it, then creating a new flow and hit Control V to paste it in. You can disable the whole flow so that it's just sitting there and not running, but you can use it as a reference. I glossed over most of the details in that node red code. Um, just to keep the video manageable, but if anyone has an interest in going over the minutia, let me know. We can do a follow-up detailed video. Uh, that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Next time.